All right, so for the next part, let's see if we can connect the printer to our phone. So let me go down here to account and I'll click on that. And we do have a barcode here. Maybe that'll lead us somewhere. I'm gonna use my camera and open it up. And it takes us to download an app and it's called Bamboo Handy. So here we are at the App Store. Let's install it. And it is 73 megabytes, almost 74. All right, so it's downloaded. Let's open it up. So we have to agree to privacy protection, allow notifications. And this is our main screen here. Let's go ahead and click on this plus button over here. And we'll have to create an account. So you have to put in your email and then send yourself a verification code. All right, and then we're gonna sign in. We need to allow to find nearby devices. Allow, and it's scanning. Looks like our printer that came up here on the bottom. So let's click on that. So we're gonna read and accept privacy policies and whatnot else. Confirm bind, pair and connect. Phone's asking. So lots of allows here. So now there's a code that comes up on the printer and on the phone that should match. And we're gonna click on pair. I guess we gotta click here also pair. Well, actually, I guess it didn't work. Let me try that again. All right, so it looks like we're at the next page and we have to log in into our Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Click on bind. All right, so it looks like we're logged in and that took a couple tries. So I'm not sure if it's just maybe my network or what. Here it's asking us to confirm that we took out those bolts. So it's actually going through the setup process, which was probably pretty helpful when you first get started. Also on the printer here, it says we have new firmware available and if we wanna update, so I guess let's go ahead and do that. And there it goes, so we got zero there. So let's go ahead and just see what's on the app here. Okay, so we do need to log in into the printer. So we'll go ahead and let that update and we'll try to log in. All right, looks like it's back and it says it's been successfully updated. Cool. So let's go ahead and go back to our QR code, wherever that, there we go. It says we're logged in. Yeah, it looks like it walks you through to even logging in the app, so. But we're already logged in, so I'm not sure how to get past this part, let's see. Okay, so if we just go back, we can see that we already logged in and that's our device there. And there's also a video here, it looks like, of some sort. Okay, so that's actually our camera, which is right over here. See my hand there. So there is a little bit of a, well, quite a bit of a delay. Refresh rate is kind of low, but you know, you do get to see what's going on through the camera. So here we have some stats. Got the printer and then the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, the speed. If we click on that, we get quite a few more options. Temperature and axes and also filament. You can load and unload here from the phone. Extruder controls are here too, so yeah, you can also turn the light on and off. So you guys can see there in the background. Pretty cool, we'll leave that on. So down here we have devices and me. If we click on me, it's gonna be your account here. We got the store, looks like another link there. My history, there's nothing here. Support tickets, scan QR code, settings. Let's see what's in the settings. So basically your profile settings, account security, and about the app. So yeah, pretty straightforward here, guys. And all of your controls are here. And if we click on the nozzle, we can type it in, or actually they got hot buttons here. That's cool, so if we click on 220, it's gonna go straight to that. And on the bed, we can click 45 and done. And it's gonna start warming up. All right, cool. And it actually looks like if you just click on it, it also preheats on the number itself. So if we can click here in the corner on these little lines, we got machine assistant. And this is where your messages will be from the machine. Calibration, so you can do bed leveling and resonance calibration. You can start it from here. Print options, so you can turn on auto recovery from here. Record settings, so it's recording videos. We got device name and the version, so pretty straightforward and cool. So I don't see where the print button is, which I thought would be around here somewhere. Maybe we gotta click on one of these links. And that just takes us to the Bamboo Lab website. I thought they would have something where you can print straight from the phone. And by the way, while clicking around, I realized if you click on the speed, you actually can choose there from ludicrous, sport, and standard. But yeah, this is where you can change it. And they also have silent there on the very bottom. All right, so apparently the Handy app here does not have a way to actually print from here, which is a little disappointing, to be honest. Like if you're gonna have an app, you know, this nice and have all these nice features, especially controlling the printer, you should be able to, you know, at least access your SD card from here and start a print. But yeah, for some reason they chose only to give you controls once you're printing. So you can kind of 
monitored and whatnot else. So yeah, let's go ahead for the desktop and see if we can download the Bamboo Labs slicer where from there we can definitely send files to the printer. All right, so here we are at the website of Bamboo Lab and we're at the P1P page here. And yeah, it looks like they have a few accessories that you can actually download like these panels and print them out. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, so if we click here on software, we can see we got Bamboo Studios. So we downloaded the Handy app. Now we need the studio. So let's click download. So I am on Mac, so I'll be clicking on this button here. Save that. So it is download, but it says unconfirmed for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why. Very, very strange. All right, so there might be hope. So if you click here on you can check news and full releases, you'll get this tab to open. And then here I see a DMG file here for the latest 1.6.2 of the Studio Mac. So let's click on that. Hopefully save this to the computer. And now we have an actual DMG file that we can open. So yeah, if you're going to download, try to do it in that way if you're on Mac. So now we're just gonna drag this to the applications and it should install it. And sure enough, here it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we see here. So it looks like we got to get started. North America, next. So these are the printers that are available to use in the slicer. Look at that, they even got Creality in here. So we are on the P1P. Here we have filament selection. So you can, I guess, select the kind of filament that you plan on using. I'm just gonna leave everything the way it is. And it looks like it's gonna install some kind of network plugin. So we'll just click on finish and see what happens. It says successful. We'll close that. It's a little bigger, but yeah, this is what we see here. So we're at home right now. Start a new project here. So we got prepared. This is going to be our slicer. Pretty cool. And it looks like it knows that we have the P1P. So that's good. We got preview and then device here. It says no printer. Let's see if we can find our printer here. The printer is connected. Not too sure here. Well, actually guys, I think we need to log in. That's the problem. So totally forgot to do that. So let's go ahead and log in. It's asking if we want to synchronize the cloud data. Sure. And let's see if our device is connected. Now, there we go. Now we're connected and we have the camera here too. view it live. Look at that. Pretty awesome. So yeah, you just have to log in. So once you log in, everything is good and it finds the printer automatically and connects. So let's go ahead and click on new project and it's gonna take us to prepare. So this is our build plate here. Yeah, it looks really nice. I love the layout. And we actually have buttons here virtually on the pad, if I can get there. Anyways, you can see them here. We got lock, X, so some basically options. So double click moves it around and single click does this. So. All right, so let's throw a calibration cube in there and we'll zoom in here a bit. So we can see there's some information here on the side. I made it disappear, but it says calibration cube and the size of it and more interesting specs. But yeah, over here, it looks like we have all of our settings to the left. So we've got plate type, filament, bamboo basic. And here we have all the parameters. If we toggle this advanced, we're gonna get a lot more options. So here we have quality, strength. So basically here you can adjust and fine tune. Um, I don't know, the way it's printing, it seems to be perfect pretty much. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. So on the top here, we have quite a few things we can do. Rotate the model, lay on the face and whatnot else. So just slicer options, which could be pretty useful here. So yeah, nothing too new here, pretty much the same stuff. If you use the slicer before, I mostly use Kira, so this is pretty familiar. Here we have slice plate. So if we click on that, it's going to slice the model. It's going to give us a lot more other stats. So if we're happy with everything, we're going to click on print plate. And as we can see, we can send it here straight to the printer. And here you can choose the option of bed leveling. So yeah, they do have an option to turn that off. So if you don't want it to bed level, I'm going to leave it on for this one as we did an update. Also, you can choose to do a time lapse or not. I guess we'll leave that on also. So it's going to take 21 minutes and five seconds to print which is pretty reasonable. Let's see if we unclick this. All right, so it doesn't change the time. I'm guessing this is the print on its own. It doesn't include bed level. In any case, let's click on send and we should be sending it to the printer. And there it goes. And now it automatically goes to the device where we can see with everything that's going on. And I can see the printer starting to move. Here we have all of the options that we can see and do with the printer as it's printing. So right now we're on status. We've got media update and there's some other option here all right so the printer's moving and you guys can see the lag is quite laggy i mean it's not live for sure but it's about every couple seconds it refreshes so yeah not you know the best refresh rate but i guess still very useful as you can see what's going on so we're preheating here to 250 and then it's going to go through all of the usuals of purging and leveling and all that stuff and then it'll start printing so it looks like the 21 minutes was with everything. So we have 16 minutes left. 
it says it's 20% done. So, And over here we have an AMS little section, which we don't have. This is a multi-material system. So. so yeah, that's pretty cool. And it is starting to print. And it's pretty nice to see this live view of what's going on. So yeah, we can go around here and click on different things. And again, I don't see any place where we can access the SD card from here. So whatever projects you do, looks like you have to bring them in yourself from wherever you get them and then you go from here. So, all right, so it looks like we've started and we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're here and it's doing the out of bed leveling and I went to the app here and you guys hopefully can see there that it is pulling up our project and it's 24% done and we got 15 minutes left. So yeah, that was the total time all combined together with whatever it's doing. So yeah, let's see if we can see the live view from here also. All right, so it's purging. And now it's printing. So it does look like we can live view from both places, the computer and the phone at the same time. So that's kind of cool. So yeah, this looks like it's a 15 minute calibration cube. And we do have an icon there that says it is recording. We can pause, stop, or we have all of these other settings we can do while it's printing. So yeah, pretty intuitive and pretty cool how it all works together. And very nice if you want to monitor it while you're not around the printer. And I'm a little curious if we go here and go to sport and see what happens. So that bumped it up to 124% and it did speed up a bit. Well, let's see if we can go to Ludacris here. And it went down to 11 minutes by the way. So now we're on Ludacris, which went to 166% and that's how fast that is. It's actually quite quick. And now it's down to seven minutes. So you have very, very quick printer guys. It is boogieing along. So I'm just gonna let it print out in Ludacris because I wanna see what the quality will look like at its fastest speed here. All right, and just like that, it is finished. And on the app, it actually gives a notification that the print was successful. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So this is the full speed, which is probably about seven, eight minutes to print this. And you guys can see we do have a little bit of ringing there on the X axis. And by the way, that axis don't really matter for this printer as it is a Core XY, but still kind of interesting to see here on the flat walls. We got the Y. But what's impressive is how well the layers are sitting and even the corners look great, which is quite impressive. So yeah, that was the X wall. A little more vibrations than the Y. But yeah, top looks great and bottom is also good. Very nice. So on the app, if we click on me, we can go to my history and we can see that our cube is now saved in the cloud since we sent it over. So I think we can print from here maybe or not. Let's see. Oh yeah, we can. So you can print from the app of the same print or whatever other prints that you've sent here before. So let's click on print again. So it's pulling up the AMS, so which we don't have. And here we can also click time lapse and bed leveling. So I think we're gonna uncheck the bed leveling since we've done that just now. So let's just go straight to print now. And now in the settings, well actually we don't need to go there. On the speed, we'll change that to sport. So we'll have all the different speeds printed out and we'll kind of look at them all together. By the way, on the preview here, you can full screen it so you can see a little better of the model up closer. And actually there's stats also here of what's going on with the printer currently. So yeah, really nice polished app overall. I just wish it had a little bit more accessibility to bring prints in and slice them right from here. But yeah, other than that, excellent app as far as control goes. All right, and away it goes and looks like officially it is 12 minutes for the Sport, which is 124%. So in silent mode, as you guys can see, we're at 50% of the speed and it's going to take like 
30 minutes to print this cube, which is quite a long time. And the crazy part is it's not silent at all because the fan is super loud. So you guys can probably hear that through the microphone. Even though it is slower, I would say standard is definitely much, much better to print in than silent as it's literally twice as fast as this. And the noise is arguably the same. So anyways, we're printing our last cube and uh, we'll check the four different ones after this one's done. All right guys, so we got the four cubes. Surprisingly, there's not a huge difference between the four, meaning as in like, they all look really good. Here, we're looking at them all four. So this is the fastest here, and then slower, slower, and slowest. So as you can see, they're quite similar, even though the speeds are quite different. So if I had to choose, I'd probably just print in standard as it is pretty quick. Or if I wanted something quicker, I would go to sport. Silent is not really worth it at all. It's super slow and the fan is still loud, so it's not quiet. And the fastest one is good, but not great, which I would use more like in the pinch if I want something really quick. But then again, you know, if your model is not too big, it probably isn't worth it. So I think I will stick to standard or sport on most of the prints. So probably larger prints, I'll go for sport and smaller prints, I'll do standard.